for CU at USC. Today I'm here with actor William Maypother. It's coming up next on CU at USC, the best college talk show on television. Hello and welcome to See You at USC. I'm your host, Laura Berman, and today I'm here with actor William Maypother. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Maypother, I've been working on this. What can I do? She's done a really good job. Thank She's you. She's been working very hard. It's so good of you. Now, you. one of the things that I think everyone is recognizing right now is that you were one of the biggest, you know, characters on Lost for many years. Now, yeah. I mean, well, the first season, but they keep bringing you back. Yeah. So what was it like to work on such a hit show? It was a lot of fun. It's terrific. You think you get that many actors together and you're going to have a lot of problems. But everyone on the show in the cast is fun and professional and the producers and the crew are terrific. I mean, they're in Hawaii and they're on a hit show, so they're right. already in a good mood. Twisting but they, arm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they really gathered a good group of people, so it's a lot of fun. And it's fun for me because I'm a fan of the show as well, which is not common for a lot mm. of actors. You tell you, a lot of times we do jobs just because we need to. And so it's, it's, I've had a little bit of a schizophrenic effect because on the one hand, I participate as an actor and on the other hand, I enjoy the show as an audience member. <laughs> That's and right. it's very tough for me to see myself on screen, mm. you know? And so I, I'll be watching the show and one of my episodes will come on and be like, get that guy off the screen, let me enjoy the show. <laughs> well, your sentiment is not shared by many because even though you were there for the first season and then they killed you off, you keep coming back. I've now been on officially more often since I died than when I was alive. Now, do you think that there's any chance that the writers are going to figure out a way to get you to come back as a full-time character? Uh, it's certainly within the realm of possibility, given mm -hmm. Lost. They haven't <laughs> said anything to me yet, but uh, I think I'll keep, keep coming back in flashbacks. Mm -hmm. But as to whether or not they'll actually resurrect me, I don't know. And there is one other thing. I just w shot something a couple uh, weeks ago. They're doing something new this season. They're shooting a series of short webisodes. Oh, They're going to cool. be airing one a week on ABC.com before uh, leading up to the start of the season. Hmm. And they're not going to be previews of what's actually in the episodes. It's going to be additional material. So I just shot one of those. Oh, that's really cool. So it's cool. a fun show to be a part yeah. of. Yeah. I tell you, the internet has taken over. It has. Now, on the show, you play this sort of, I don't know, you're giving me the heebie-jeebies. I, <laughs> I was watching, and, um, and I just wonder how you prepare for that role, because you are a very nice guy, I have to tell you. Oh, we shouldn't let the word get out. Uh, that, it was interesting mm -hmm. uh, because when I showed up, I was there for the seventh episode of the, of the season. And the first episode I was in had very little information. I'd kind of just show up and I have a line or two. And I asked them, what can you tell me about my character? And there was not a lot they could tell me. Mm -hmm. They were still kind of figuring things out. Right. So it was kind of a sort of amorphous background and maybe he's kind of this and maybe he's kind of that. And when I shot it, I shot a lot of the scenes in a number of different ways. So I had no idea what they were going to select. So I when see. I saw the performance, I was as surprised as anybody. So in answer to your question, there really wasn't that much preparation I could do because I wasn't given that much information about the character. Hmm. Um, but once I found out what little they wanted, the preparation is pretty much similar to anything else. Uh, at least the way I approach it is I go use my imagination and a little bit of my past and a little bit of what the uh, uh, my acting partner is giving me and I kind of cobble together something. Hmm. Now one of the <laughs> things is your character got a lot of the twists and turns in the scripts and I just wonder do you think that they why do you suppose that your character is the one that was given all of those uh, plot twists? Uh, that's a good question I don't know I was I think I don't think they expected my character to have the impact that he had. Right. Uh, although I'll, I'll tell you, when I was flying over to Hawaii to shoot the first episode, I read the script in which, and for any of your audience members who haven't started watching Lost, you might want to turn the volume a little bit. But <laughs> when I discovered, when I read in the script that my character was discovered not to have been on the plane manifest, and they realized he was not one of the passengers, he was the first one who actually was on the island before the plane crash. I realized what a moment it was going to be. So I landed and I called my agent. I said, you wait until this comes on screen. And I say that by way of flowing credit to the writers because right. everyone did a terrific job. But if it's not on the page, it's not on the screen. Sure. Um, 
So I don't know why. I guess I got lucky. Well, I guess I ask because I've heard on some shows where the writers, they sort of pick up on the personalities of the actors on set and then they just sort of interject <laughs> it into the script, you know, to make it believable. So I wondered if you were a bit of a troublemaker or if there was any of that going on. They thought, well, let's use this to our advantage. Uh, my understanding is my agent proposed me for the role and J.J. Abrams, who was still very involved at this point, uh, very early on, had seen my performance in In the Bedroom. Mm. Uh, and he said, that's in the bedroom, the movie. And he said, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he said, this guy uh, could play, uh, could play a character like Ethan Rom very easily. Mm -hmm. So he, he hired me. So I don't know, how, I didn't know any of them personally. I see. Uh, so how did the audition <clears throat> process for such a hit show go? I mean, we hear that sometimes it takes ages. What was your process? Like? I got lucky on this one. My agent proposed me and JJ knew me from in the bedroom, mm -hmm. again the movie, and the agent had, I give my agent a scene from another movie that was subsequently cut from that movie, and she sent that tape over and it was similar right. in nature to what Ethan Rom was expected to be, and they just cast me without an audition. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, how do you feel that this role has sort of influenced the subsequent roles that you've gotten? I mean. That's a good now you're sort of a villain. Well, so, uh, I... Uh, despite being such a nice fellow. Uh, thank you very much. One of my first roles and one of my favorite movies is a movie called Without Limits, about a runner in the early 70s at the University of Oregon, Steve Prefontaine. It was written and directed by Robert Town, Donald Sutherland, and Billy Crudup. And any of your nice. audience who has not seen it should really run it. It's a terrific movie. But I play kind of a boy next door. I'm a steeple jumper, a uh, steeple chaser, and... Uh, can't even think of the proper term. But basically, my character is a boy next door and, and a Bible thumper. The casting director for In the Bedroom didn't want to bring me in. She said, he's too nice a guy. The director insisted on bringing me in. I play uh, not necessarily the most sympath sympathetic character in that. Then Mission Impossible 2, then Swordfish, and then Lost. And now, suddenly, I've been, you know, <laughs> I, I've been pigeonholed as a bad guy. And so Lost, in some ways, was the nail in the coffin. So far... <laughs> As it were. So, so, it's so funny that you would think of such an amazing show and be like, that was the nail in my coffin. Well, I'm very lucky because, you know, it's expanded right. my, the possibilities of my career. But at the same time, I'm in the position that a lot of actors are in, which is Hollywood perceives me one way. So right. my job is to expand that perception. Sure.